Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. All right, reducing competing frequencies when mixing music in Ableton Live, or any software for that matter. A good example of this is when you have a kick drum and you have a bass line on two separate channels, and you really can't hear the slap or the kick of the kick drum because the bass line hovers around the same frequency range. And a lot of folks will use a sidechain compression method for this, which creates a little bit of a pumping compression sound uh, every time the kick hits. And that's fine, and it's very common in dance music, but it doesn't always fit all types of music. And there's another way to approach this, and I just used the EQ method for this, and it's fairly common as well. Uh, but go ahead and try it out, and maybe it'll help the clarity of your mixes. So what do I have here? I have the bass line... And I also have a pad clip, which is just a basic loop, so I can show you how this works. But I'll go ahead and play this back. Go ahead and really listen to the sound very closely. I really recommend uh, some high-quality headphones or some good speakers so you can really hear the changes in the sound. I'll go ahead and play this back. Okay, so it sounds like there's a synthesizer pad going on there with a little rumble bass going on in the background. But let's just say that the bass line really helped define the melody of a certain track and you wanted to bring out more clarity or just make that bass line shine through. So you need to figure out which sound or which channel is most important to you and then focus on enhancing or bringing more clarity to that particular sound. Uh, but so in this case, we're going to use the bass, the bass, uh, the bass line here on this bass channel. I'll go ahead and double click on that. Next, what I'm going to do is add in a spectrum, and this is sort of just to help you and assist you on locating a frequency faster. Besides listening to it, uh, you can use this if you want. I can expand the spectrum by clicking on this little arrow right here, and let's go ahead and play this back. I will uh, just mute the pad channel and just listen to the bass for now and you can see that we're hovering here around 75 hertz between 70 and 115 to 120 hertz to be exact but you might see a peak in there somewhere and that just helps you on dialing in on that frequency let's go over to inside the audio effects folder again Let's find the EQ8, which is just the stock EQ in live. This will work just fine. Whenever I open up the EQ8, I always like to reserve the first filter here for reducing or creating a frequency cutoff on the low end in case I need it later. So I like to save that. And anything in the 100 hertz range, such as right here, I like to use filter number two. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the peaked frequency in this bass line, and we already know the frequency range that it's at, so this will be fairly easy to do. Let's go ahead and listen to it back, and we want to really find the peak sound here, so it may distort or you may hear interesting tonalities as we do this. It's a good idea to narrow this Q, which is just like a resonance, so you can really dial in on those peaked frequencies there. I got some really low rumble going on. So I'll just stop right there. Then what I'll do is grab the gain and turn the gain all the way down. Next what I'll need to do is cut this EQ8. So right click right on the EQ bar at the very top and select cut. And what we're going to do is just paste this EQ onto the pad channel because we want to reduce this certain frequency range on the pad channel to let the bass come through. I'll double click on the pad channel and then I'll right click down here in the Dropbox area and select paste. And there you have it. So the bass channel, it's no longer there. And the pad channel now has the EQ8 applied to it. Let's go ahead and unmute that channel and listen to both back. You can also adjust the cue 
to bring in a little bit more clarity, a little bit more room for a bass line. So this is before. And this is after. And now I can turn on number one and roll off the low end. Now this might seem like a backwards way of doing it. Uh, if you have some more sophisticated sounds though, this really comes in very useful. But we could just put an EQ on the pad channel and do it that way. But unless you wanted to retain a lot of the pad's uh, tonalities and a lot of the character of the pad, uh, I, I probably wouldn't recommend coming in here and using an extreme low cutoff like this because then you're going to start to remove a lot of that uh, character of the sound that you probably want to keep. So it's good to just use cuts instead of gains and also cut the frequencies besides rolling them off extremely like this. So just take care when you're working in that area there. Let's go ahead and move over to another one here. I'll go ahead and drag the loop markers over and let's listen to what else we have here. Okay, so we have uh, a bass line down here. We also have a kick drum or a uh, drum loop happening, two bar drum loop. Well, let's just say that we wanted that kick drum to shine through a little bit more uh, because the bass line is on the same frequency range. Let's go ahead and listen to that back. There's probably different tonalities of this kick drum and we can find out where those frequency ranges are by using the spectrum. I'll go ahead and drag that in here. Let's go ahead and play this back. So you can see that we're peaking out here in almost the same spot that we were before, 77, 78 hertz. So if we really wanted a punch to punch through the bass line, then we would have to reduce the frequency range or the frequency point on the bass line, which matches the kick drum. So, and if that made any sense, I probably really confused that right there, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So over on the drum channel, I'll come up here and drag in an EQ8 just in front of the spectrum. I'll go ahead and save filter number one, drag in number two, bring this up and adjust the Q. And let's go ahead and play this back. You can hear those really ringy tonalities there. But I can turn this down and look over here at the spectrum and see what's going on. That sounds, that's a pretty high frequency there. But you may have some other slappier sounds. See, if you're looking for a slap to show through more, you could cut at the slap of the kick, but if you have the lower end of the kick, you're going to want to cut on the lower end, or you can also cut for both. If you want to get really detailed, you could grab two of these and find the slap of the kick, and then find the highest point of the lowest, uh, lowest frequencies of the kick, and then reduce these both like this. And then copy this or I'm sorry, cut, and go into the bass channel, right click and paste. And there you have it. But you, sometimes you may find that cutting can also reduce the sound of the other channels. So you really wanna watch the cue when you're doing this. So it really helps to dial in just on the highest frequencies only and then you can go back and adjust the cue. You can also increase the volume on this channel. So I have only a few minutes left. I would like to go over another little secret that I use, and it's called the, the mud test. And what it is, is it finds mud in the lower end of your mix. And so what I'll do to show you this, I'm going to double click on the master channel here and over in the audio effects folder, here's the multiband dynamics plugin. Go ahead and drag this in. The coolest thing about this multiband dynamics plugin is not necessarily all the, uh, the compression and all the uh, 
features, but the one I like the most is this option down here, which allows you to solo a chosen frequency range. So basically, if I set this to 100 and then I solo it, live will only play all frequencies from, from this number here and below. And all the frequencies above 100 hertz are muted. I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. And it'll even do this to my voice because I have my voice on a channel as well. I'll go ahead and play this back. Here we go. Okay, well, let's solo. And when you do this, listen for the muddy low end in your mix. And this really gives you the truth. I mean, if you're going to blast this up on big speakers on the dance floor, then this way you're going to really hear what that's going to sound like when you have a big subwoofer or something like that. It's really recommended to listen to this or to do this on headphones, especially if you have small speakers or an untreated room. I'll go ahead and play this back. So while this is being soloed, I could EQ this bass channel. And that's the trick right here. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. There we go, I can hear that kick drum coming through just a little bit louder now, here we go. So the bass line is there, but now the kick is just slapping through. I'll show you before and after. So there you go. Try that little tip at home. This is Mark for Ableton Daily. And if you like what you saw, hey, subscribe. Please subscribe. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think. And uh, I like to post videos every day, at least Monday through Friday. And the weekends, I take uh, some time off. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.